Welcome to another bonus episode of Jackie Just Chatters. I'm your hostess, Jackie Lentz. I haven't had a bonus episode in a while. This was kind of fun to put together. I've got a delightful episode for you this week. It's all Michigan and it's all feel good. Two of my favorite things rolled into one. Lucky me. Hey, don't forget you can subscribe to Jackie Just Chatters on your favorite podcast medium or find me on YouTube. My regular episodes come out every other Thursday. Let's get on with the stories. Recently, I took a girl's getaway to Cadillac, Michigan. This small vacation town was one I had never visited before. The quaint downtown Main Street has adorable shops selling books, way more art than I would have expected, up north goodies that I did expect, and a shout out to the Clam Lake Beer Company. Your tachos are to die for. Me and my gal pals, in fact, ate there twice. We came back just for those tachos. No regrets. While we were driving through town, I saw this unusual granite monument, written at the top in big, bold letters, and their iconic font was the word KISS. KISS, as in the band. This monument overlooked Lake Cadillac and was next to the high school. I could smell a story here, and I had to know more. Thanks to the Google machine, the story was quickly uncovered. Part of Michigan's past that I had never heard of. And I had to ask, why hadn't I? Why wasn't this story more well known? I knew I had to share it on my humble podcast. We go back in time, back to the days of bell bottoms and wide collars at every department store. Sanford and Son and News of Watergate were on TV, and rock and roll was playing on the radio. In 1974, the Cadillac High Vikings had lost the first two games of the football season. This was crushing to the players and fans alike, since only last year, the Vikings had finished the season with a no-loss 9-0 record. Seemed the pressure of trying to do it again was getting to them. The coaches were trying to come up with ways to turn that ship around, to build up morale and keep the players fulfilling their victorious potential. Someone suggested playing rock music in the locker room before games to pump the guys up. The bold, extravagant, and loud group of KISS was selected to fill that need. Not only did the jams have lots of energy, the name KISS was a time-honored slogan of Keep it simple, stupid. With Kiss's music roaring before every game, the Vikings came back with a vengeance. They went on to win their final seven matches. Somehow, the band heard about the connection between their music and the Vikings' victories. Kiss adopted the Vikings as their own. And then, in a gesture of thoughtfulness and generosity, KISS came to Cadillac in 1975. But oh, they didn't just come for a quick fly-by-night visit. Oh no. They came to the high school gym and performed a concert in time for October's homecoming. Can you imagine a big-name band coming to your school in a very rural community to boot and putting on your homecoming concert? Just let that sink in for a minute. This concert and the KISS connection is not just something of the past in Cadillac. So let's fast forward 40 years later. It's October 2015, and the town has a 40-year anniversary special and unveils the monument to KISS and that concert. The monument is made of midnight black granite, 
is over eight feet tall and weighs about 5,000 pounds. It really is quite impressive. And it's the only KISS monument in the world. I'll be putting a photo of it on my Facebook page if you want to take a look at it. I'll also include links to check out more details and photos in the episode notes. How can you not love this feel-good story? And it happened in October, so this month felt like the right time to share it with you. My next Michigan story came to me from a friend who lives in Virginia, but we are both book lovers, and she knew I'd want to hear about this act of generosity. We traveled to western Michigan, not too far from the Big Lake. This begins with the Patmos Library. They had made the local news because on their shelves were several LGBTQ-related materials. Some conservative parents were making a lot of noise about these books. The librarians were willing to compromise and put a few flagged items behind the counter they had to be asked for. But this was not enough. A campaign to fund the library had begun. On August 2, 2022, a proposal to renew a millage that supported the Patmos Library was rejected by the residents of Jamestown Township, which was serviced by the library, as were some other surrounding communities. This would cut the library's funding by $245,000, or 84% of their budget. Basically, the library had been given a death sentence. It was expected the library would run out of funds in late 2023. A GoFundMe page was started by a local resident to help out, and nearly $100,000 had been raised by August 11th. But the need was greater, and so was the support. If any of you are romance book fans, then there is a good chance you've heard the name Nora Roberts. She is a best-selling author of over 225 novels, which that's just mind-blowing to me, since I'm only working on number two right now. Miss Roberts found out about the library and its cause. Using the GoFundMe page, she left a donation of a whopping $50,000, as well as this comment, 50K is the limit GoFundMe allows for donations. If you're short of your goal, please contact me. I'll make up the rest. She didn't need to add more. Her donation helped push the pile over the $245,000 mark. Michigan has some pretty amazing friends out there. As a Michigander, I want to thank all out there who don't live in this beautiful state but give of your time and or money to help make this a wonderful place to live. Kind hearts can achieve great things. I will be including links to news stories about this event in my episode description if you want to check them out. My final story of Michigan takes us up to where the two peninsulas find themselves separated by the Straits of Mackinac. The Mackinac Bridge was constructed in 1956. This was a big deal in the state. Before then, if you wanted to get to the upper peninsula from the lower, you had to take a ferry or drive around Lake Michigan. And folks, no one's got time for that. Jack R. Thompson, now a resident of Alpena, was one of those who helped build the bridge. 
he helped string up some of the 42,000 miles and 11,840 tons of cables that suspend the Mighty Mac, as we lovingly call it here. Mr. Thompson, now 93, lives in the Besser Senior Living Community and was presented by its director, Bill O'Neill, a piece of original steel grating from that very bridge. Thompson reflected on his time working on the bridge and the great friends he met while doing the work. Having a piece of his past gave him a wonderful feeling and he was full of great memories. I'll include the news link on this story as well in the notes. If you want a piece of great, you can have one too. If you are lucky enough to nab one. You can find them for sale at the Mackinac Bridge Administration Office in St. Agnes, Michigan. That's the town you enter just as you pass north of the Mackinac Bridge. Grading pieces cost $20 each, and customers are limited to three pieces each. That is if you can find them in stock. I've yet to find anyone who was that charmed. But if you find yourself in the area and they have some for sale, please pick me one up. That would be an amazing piece of Michigan history I would dearly love to have. That is the end of my Michigan and kindness stories. Thanks for joining me. I hope you'll be back for my next episode, which is all spooky and supernatural in time for Halloween. Until then, I wish you well.